so we're gonna bring on Jim Jin Kang from Global Coin Research. Jin is a Jin is a great um, great resource for everything that has to do with investment DAOs and um, a lot of DAO architecture. So I'm um, really excited to talk to him. Hey Trevor, hey, how are you? What's going on? So yeah. before we get kind of dive into investment DAOs and, and everything with that, I'd like to sort of just sort of dive into you sort of what is your what is your background where did you come from and how did you get involved in web3 yeah sounds good um to keep, give you give everyone a quick background um hi everyone i'm jen kang and i'm in charge of investments at global coin research which is a uh, investment and research DAO. uh to give a quick background about myself i grew up in boston and after graduating from princeton in 16 I started, I started out in the m and group at Bank of America Merrill Lynch and spent the past few years at a private equity firm called Gems from Capital before joining Global Coin Research late last year. Uh, it's been a fun, obviously rewarding journey past four or five months, I would say, and happy to excite, like, you know, happy to share my thoughts on the future of, you know, investment DAO and what we have been doing. But I got introduced to Global Coin Research through a mutual friend and met the founder, Joyce, um, at NFT NYC during the Magic Evening event that GCR co-hosted and loved the vision of where GCR is headed to and I wanted to be a part of it really. So um, past four or five months, we, we've been really focused on growing the investment DAO and also obviously making sure the investment that we do as a DAO have been stellar and strong. So happy to you know talk through what, what what's the process behind each investment process or whatnot. Gotcha. All right. Well, before we kind of go super granular, let's start really broad. Um, I think the, the just the overall term of DAO just was introduced into normal mainstream nomenclature within like the last year. And investment DAO, probably even more recently, in the last six months. So could we just maybe start off by explaining what an investment DAO is? Yeah. So I think investment DAO is a general term. Um, as, DA as people know, DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Um, there are a few types of how you could form an investment DAO and invest, right? There are uh, some investment DAOs like the Lao, where as a member, you need to commit a certain amount of capital and then it gets pulled into a centralized fund and it gets invested out of that centralized pool based on voting, right? If 50% or more of members want to invest, they invest out of that pool. For us, we're a little bit more decentralized investing, I would say, where we do on a deal by deal basis and we let members opt in to invest their personal check or not for each investment opportunity. So what makes us different is that every member has an option to uh, invest or pass on, opportunity, on opportunities that they do not like. So that's what makes us quite different from other investment towns. Gotcha. And now is this, is, is, can anybody participate in an investment DAO or is it maybe mainly for accredited investors or how can a normal person get involved? Yeah. So right now, um, currently because we create a, you know, U.S. entity for every investment that we do, you have to be accredited just due to the U.S. law. But obviously we want to decentralize the process further and further where anyone can theoretically join and invest alongside with us. So that's in the future and obviously more to come. So where actually, where are those laws right now? Um, do, you, do you foresee like a process like pretty soon, like a, an average person? Because I know through like for through things like Republic and non non accredited investors can participate in um, venture deals. But like where did, where is that? I'm not actually sure if you even know this, but where is the, do you know where the legislation with that is right now? Yeah, I, I wish I knew, honestly. Um, but to be to be honest with you, I think we will see more, you know, lax regulations around this this law where I think a lot of individuals do have the power to invest if they feel strongly about a specific project. Obviously, the government government wants to protect um, you know, citizens from making an um, irrational decision on investing in a project without knowing as much as other institutional investors. Our job as an investment DAO, obviously, is to allow everyone in the community to participate in the discussion and the due diligence so that everyone feels comfortable when they make a uh, personal, I guess, when they write their personal check to invest in the project that we do as a community. So that's the first step for us. And I think, um, you know, given that we are based in the U.S., we just have to follow the you know, laws of SEC or uh, the government, we have to make sure the members are accredited. But we definitely do think in the near term or in the, you know, in the medium term, the laws will change where, you know, average, you know, citizens could participate in these uh, private deals, I would say. 
Gotcha. And now I, I've, I've thumbed around the GCR Discord a little bit, and I, I've, I've seen some of the deals on the table. Where where are you guys sourcing your deal flow from? So it's actually uh, it's, it's interesting you ask that because we actually started out as where the core team, like myself, would be the ones driving deal flow, right? We would source, we would bring in awesome deals that we have done to date. Uh, but now we actually decentralize that um, deal sourcing part of it where any members who have access to deal flow can participate in sourcing and pitching deals to the community and then we could invest in those projects so theoretically let's say trevor you know a you know smart friend who's you know, who has an awesome project that you think is going to be good and they're raising and because you are you know a close friend of him he's willing to give some allocation to gcr if you pitch the deal and we invest in that project as a community like you can theoretically get compensated for that um role that you participated in so we want to you know obviously reward everyone um from participating in every aspect of the deal process and potentially you know earn money from that too yeah, and so people earn money through um, providing sort of due diligence on, on behalf of the project and for pitching. And is that mainly pro is that uh, is that contribution rewarded in your native token, or do you reward through sort of USDC? How do you how do you go about that or rewarding process? Yeah, it'll be a, a native token, which is GCR token, which is um, I, I guess liquid at the moment. Gotcha. And I, I'm curious, in like in the overall like. I, I see a lot, a lot, tons and tons of DAOs are, are popping up like every day, and I'm, I'm curious on overall like, what what the what the benefit of having it of the DAO structure versus a company or versus a venture capital firm. What what drove you guys to to go with a decentralized route versus basically coming together and forming a, a firm? You know, I, I think like the reason why we went through a DAO structure is to really address the inefficiency and, and opaqueness of traditional venture capital firms or other institutional capital, right? We do not have to deal with like the internal politics, investment communities, and other drags of traditional finance at a, uh, if you do have a venture DAO like ourselves, you know, and also we like the idea that everyone can participate in this due diligence discussion and can opt in to invest or not rather than you know centralized entity or central team forcing people to invest alongside with them right which is the case with a lot of syndicates that we see in the world right now so i think a unique thing about us is again like everyone will know the progress of each investment opportunity and be able to participate in each step of the process if they want and if they do not want they can also opt out right which is not the case at other large institutional capital or other vc funds gotcha so what would you say your um, GCR and, and actually just investment does in general, their contribution to the, the broader Web3 ecosystem will be? Are you mainly investing in, yeah, I, I understand you're mainly investing in Web3 projects. Um, do, you, do you see yourselves essentially as like the financier of Web3 or how do you, how do you vision that kind of going forward? Yeah, um, so we are definitely focused on Web3.0 because I think there are a lot of aspects that we uh, we have as an investment DAO that align well with the founders of Web 3.0 projects, right? Like, we, I, I do think venture DAOs um, are very competitive, right? Like, one of the key differentiators, I would say, is the community behind venture DAOs. Like, for us, we have over 3,200 members. The fact that the founders of these projects that we support will have the access and the support of the large, dedicated community behind each, I guess, behind us is truly amazing and I think important for them when they are pre-launch, right? We invest in projects that are usually pre-seed, seed, which means that they're, they haven't launched it and they want to make sure there, there is a product market fit. And I think it's really important to have a community behind the idea that you are creating and uh, I guess want to go live with, right? And I think empowering these ideas with backing of the community that we have built is awesome. And I think this is the first time we're really seeing how these, you know, um, support from the community can really materialize significantly and help the projects out, I would say. And then I guess eventually, yeah, from that point, if we really successfully do well in the Web 3.0, like we could definitely see in the long run, GCR or an investment DAO could be a major powerhouse in the investing world where we actually um, have a strong community of you know people that range from investors, entrepreneurs, or just anyone um, who want to participate in these projects um, and support them and um, invest in them. And, uh, yeah. And, and 
Another a real another real strong sort of value add that venture capital firms bring is is sort of like they have marketers on staff, they have people with operating experience. Are you are you actively helping some of the projects that you're creating deal flow in, or are you mainly just taking a step back as just just the capital? Yeah, like honestly, in the current investing world, there's more capital than the projects, right? There's an obviously oversupply of capital and it's really important for you to differentiate yourself as an investment house or investment entity. And for us, we don't stop in just allocating capital. We, we do explore ways we can help the projects with, right? As I said, we have a community behind us, meaning we, there's a marketing effort that we can help out with the project, do in real life events, AMAs, or other um, ways we can help the founders and the project really get the publicity that they deserve. And I think it's interesting that we have a research newsletter on the one side of the house that has over 30,000 plus subscribers. We can work with the founders and the project to post awesome articles or write a research article about this project and the competitive landscape for people to understand why this project is different from other projects that we have, we might have seen in the space. And right now, I think as part of our major initiative that we're going to push forward for March, we are actually streamlining and formalizing the, the idea of quote unquote angel network where post investment, we're going to have members participate in these post investment support that range from marketing, recruitment, operations, and research, which are the key tenets of GCR as an investment now. And we can talk more about that uh, once we push through those initiatives. Well, that's going to be exciting. Do you yeah. see, do you see this is, do you see a lot of venture capital firms? You, you you come from a pretty heavy capital allocating background with Jump, so like I'm curious. Do you see more venture capital firms like following you in this decentralized process? Yeah, like like honestly, like I think the top tier venture capital firms are good at supporting their portfolio companies. But the reason why not many firms do well in early stage investing is. They actually did not follow through with their investment, right? They are, are they're a capital allocator and not really a supporter or a friend of these projects, right? So I do think eventually if they want to focus on Web 3.0, they definitely have they definitely need other ways that they can help these projects, right? And I think being being more decentralized makes it easier because if you want to invest in, you know, let's say 50 projects, it's hard for a core team of five people to really support 50 projects. But if you have 3,000 plus members, it's really easy to manage 50 projects because some members will yeah. support B project. I will support B, C, D projects and other like other members could also support other, you know, 45 projects that we support from GCR perspective, having it very decentralized and having responsible members um, supporting these portfolio companies is going to be more effective than, you know, five sophisticated investors supporting 50 other projects. And, and how do the, um, how do the resources that these these different projects require differ from Web two? Um, obviously, the revenue models, their 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 cap table structures, everything's completely different, turned on its head. So, like, what ways what ways are different? What ways are, what ways are the same? Yeah, I think I think a lot of concept of like how to re- generate revenue. Like, there are obviously like you know DAO tools or infrastructure projects in Web three point that will you know copy the playbook of Web 2.0 about how to price the SaaS product that they're going to sell to uh, crypto projects or companies. I think those playbook, obviously, we will leverage what has been going on in Web 2.0 and leverage that in Web 3.0. But obviously, there are other, I guess there are a lot of ways that Web 3.0 companies will need help versus the Web 2.0. And I think that's, that's it's a learning experience for us too, right? Um, tokenomics. How do how do you talk? Uh, how do you design the token so that it's very fair to the community, where insiders will not be entitled to 40, 50 percent of the t- outstanding tokens? Another one that we run into a lot is how to think about governance. Right, a lot of these projects will essentially um, release a token. How do we make sure we grow the community organically and engage them so that a lot of these participants are participating in these governance and discussion rather than just um, I guess exploring this token to you know benefit financially so it's a it's a learning experience for us too right we have been around as an investment now we've been around for less than a year but then um, a lot of the projects that we are we're seeing in the world have been around for less than three four years right like it's a learning experience for us to see like what's the right cadence what are some ways we can really develop and become an expert in certain areas of these projects to launch successfully and become the household name 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, old in crypto is like 2017. So <laughs> you guys are just about like middle age, I guess. Yeah. But um, I, I wanted to have a little bit deeper into GCR. So you said you met Joyce at NYC or NFT NYC. Um, yeah. what, what did she What did she say to you to make you want to jump away from, I guess, jump away from jump and, and really dive into GCR with her? Yeah, at the time, like I, I, I was in a private equity firm. Like I just never thought like, a crowdsourcing or these, this idea of decentralized investing would actually work. But then when I, you know, meet more founders from the conference and the projects I've been seeing, they really depend on the community portion of it, which I, which is an idea I'd never explored or never, you know, got familiar with during my past few years at a private equity firm. So when I realized that there's a power behind a community and how if a lot of if you actually build a strong support base behind each project and um, more, more usage case, basically, like it's actually gonna be successful. And I think the idea that you know she's creating this community of you know smart people and you know passionate Web 3.0 natives who want to like support them rather than just like be a mer- uh, I guess mercenary and make money was an awesome idea. And I thought you know if if that's gonna happen in a very disruptive industry like crypto. That's that's a worth the risk for me too. So I think that was pretty inspirational for me, and then that's the reason why I made a jump. That's exciting, and I know you guys participated in Seed Clubs Accelerator, right? We've we've done some some things with Chess, uh, the founder of that. What kind of yep. what kind of uh, lessons did you learn from them? Um, honestly, I wasn't involved in that process. Oh. But yeah, <laughs> I, I know we were a part yeah. of the cohort, and I know Joyce is a very strong relationship with Jess. So I think she did get a lot of support and um, help from Jess and the team to um, build a you know community of awesome investors and supporters um, that we have built uh, to date at the moment. Yeah, it's it's quite a lot to balance, right? With like yeah. with deals, editorial, some of the great editorial and research content you guys are coming with, managing right. the community. It's right. a it's a lot of lot to balance there. But I'm, I'm curious on before we kind of get to audience questions in the last five minutes. So if anybody in the audience is is, is looking to ask Jen a question, um, now's the time to start posting them. What is your what is your guys' long term? Maybe let's start with five year vision for for GCR. Yeah, the five-year vision is simple. Like we we want to be the place for anyone who's interested in the space to learn about awesome projects, see like how we support them as an investment or as a partner, and also potentially be involved in investing, right? Like I think it's simple to say we want to be the investment powerhouse, but at the, at the same time, we want to allow people to get familiar with the space and learn about these projects by joining us, right? Because we have a, besides the investing part, we have a large community of people who just talk about other crypto topics and it's a pretty vibrant community if you actually visit our Discord. So we want to be like kind of an end-to-end service, right? For people who's a beginner to like learn about the space, see all these like community events that we run um, and to learn about what crypto is, what are some awesome projects that we see across different sectors. And if you think you're ready to kind of make the next jump, you can now start, you know, investing alongside with us. I think that's, that, that is where we want to be in the next, you know, three to five years, I would say, be an end-to-end service for anyone who wants to learn about crypto and be involved in investing in these awesome projects um, that were usually, you know, only, invested by these large VC firms that we know of, right? So I think that's the vision that we're going for. Yeah, true, true decentralization. We do have a question here from from Sandro, all the way from the Swiss Alps. That's a that's amazing. So she, Sandro says, hey guys, greetings from the Swiss Alps. Welcome to, when it comes to creating a DAO, is there someone who could support me? I'd be willing to learn how, how it goes in practical. Thanks so much for your feedback. So how can how can Sandro get some support when it comes to to creating a DAO? Yeah, you know there are like actually a lot of platforms that are out there now where you can actually start building a you know DAO. It, I, I mean, I jokingly say you can just literally just write a white paper and um, um, create an ERC twenty token, and you you yourself have a DAO, right? But obviously, you want to formalize a process, and there are tools out there where you can actually leverage, like Aragon, DAO Stack, and Orca. Those are the three I would say infrastructure or tools that you can use to build a community behind it. Um, and obviously have a Discord handy 
for you to grow the community um, and build it from there. Yeah, actually, I'll build up. I'll build on that just a little bit. Um, let's say you get the first idea for a DAO. You're like, this would be a great idea for a DAO. Like, what is the first step you recommend someone take? If it's a great idea, so after you figure it out, uh, you know the idea makes sense. Make sure you obviously vet it with your friends or people you know in the space. If it's a great idea, I would say think about what um, other DAOs you want to benchmark against, right? Look at like if you want to do an investment out, like read through our white paper to see like how we design our tokenomics, how we are thinking about the vision, how we are thinking about what the price of each membership would be. Uh, but if you're a unique DAO, then like to be honest with you, like you got to start from the scratch, right? You have to think about what's the vision of the um, DAO that you envision in the next three to five years. Are you actually going to have tokens? And if there's going to be a token, Tokenomics, again, is a very new idea where you have to discuss with other groups or other people to understand what's the right split. But, you know, for people who are starting in their DAO, I, I, I tell them, hey, like, don't think too much about the granular details about tokenomics. Actually, just make sure the idea makes sense by growing the community first and think about how you're going to bring ERC20 or potentially NFTs as a membership, right? Like Link's DAO and other DAOs we've been seeing, they're using... NFTs as a membership rather than having tokens. So don't think too much about tokenomics if that's going to be a complicated issue, depending on your idea. I would say first focus on growing the community of supporters and users of your idea, and then think about those um, as a next step. That's great advice. So, so Mark Stevens just chimed in from YouTube. Can a DAO be used to invest in real estate, specifically a single piece of real estate? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think there is an actual DAO that's um, raising money to invest in real estate. I think there's no issue with that. I think, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm forgetting the name of it right now, but there is a DAO that's raising capital to invest in a single real estate, like a land or whatnot. I think it's possible. There's no regulations in the U.S. that I believe prevents you from crowdsourcing capital to invest in, a, um, I guess, a real estate or land. Gotcha. All right, I think, I think it might be called Parcel. I want to say it's something like parcel. There was one that just sold, um, just sold a, a DAO, or I guess it wasn't a DAO. I know there was a, a house was just sold as an NFT, which was really interesting, like in Florida about a couple of weeks ago. But um, right. yeah, I would, uh, I, I believe, believe it is possible. So that's that's really exciting. So we have like a few more minutes left. Um, I, we were both at ETH Denver. Um, did you go to the conference? I did. I did. Um, did. So many people there. Uh, it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was funny. I talked to a lot of people who were kind of working in the industry at East Denver, and they just didn't even attend the conference, and it was very surprising. Um, but do you have any other takeaways from from that experience? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of thoughts. Obviously, right? Like, I think um, it was it's always great to go to the, go to these conferences and meet so many young and smart people um, building something, right? Like this hackathon in East Denver was awesome. Like I met so many, you know, sub 25 year old people building something, um, having great ideas and how to, um, and wanting to talk about how they're thinking about launching their projects. And at the same time, you know, there's the other side where, you know, we're all seeing, a, I guess, a saturation of a lot of these um, ideas, right? I, at the main conference, I've seen more, uh, I would say, swaps and decentralized exchanges versus other creative or innovative ideas that I think we think of when we think of um, crypto in general. So I do definitely think we have saturated in those particular markets because it's a very easy market to target and make money. And hopefully that paradigm changes and eventually as more like more smart, like as smarter and more talented people come to the space and build what they want to build versus you know, chasing money um, in crypto. Yeah, there were quite a few swaps at right. ETH Denver. I noticed that as well. But anyways, this was, this was great, Jen. Um, do you have anything you'd like to plug before we head out of here? Um, no, I mean, thanks again for having me. And obviously, you know, as I said, you know, we're, we're pushing a lot of cool initiatives um, in the next two days. So please join us and participate in our Discord and ask me any questions. If you guys have any, obviously, they will share Twitter for us and for Global Coin Research. But yeah, we're... We're doing a lot of things and it's pretty exciting to be part of it. And I, I would love everyone to join and participate too. So gotcha. time. yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do a write up on, on all of that tomorrow. So guys, everyone who's listening to this right now, um, check into 
tomorrow's version of Inside um, Cryptocurrency, and I'll include a whole thing on, on Jen and what you guys are doing at Global Coin Research. So very exciting to talk to you. Um, looking forward to talk to you in the future. Um, thanks for everyone in the comments. Um, those are great questions. Uh, have a great day. Thank you, guys.